all this is Bengaluru's waste. It ends up here. Why is it being burnt? Because this kind of low value waste can't be recycled and if it is not burnt, it can end up here, in landfills. But by burning it in the right way, it can light up our homes. This is what a waste to energy plant is designed to do. But it is easier said than done. Here's why. Bengaluru, home to 15 million people, has a huge waste management challenge. The city generates more than 6,000 tons of waste every single day. This waste needs to be cleared before the next day's collection starts. Some of it goes to the wet waste treatment plants, some of it heads to the dry waste collection centres. Nearly 1,000 tons of non-recyclable waste is also generated each day. If not treated properly, this waste ends up in the landfills. Out of the 4,500 municipalities in India, there are very few municipalities which actually can feed waste into a waste to energy plant. So, municipalities which are smaller should not really be pushed to sending their waste to waste to energy plants. It is just not a viable solution. Ideally, for a city like Bangalore, which generates about uh, 5,000 tons of waste per day, 50% uh, of which being dry waste, which is 2,500 tons per day. Uh, and of the dry waste, maybe about 50% would be non-recyclable, which is about 12,500 metric tons per day of non-recyclable dry waste. A uh, waste to energy plant is ideal. Waste to energy plants are not new in India. They face criticism from environmentalists, but they are also seen as a last resort to tackle the garbage problem in cities. And here's where things get complicated. The recyclable faction, which is very important for resource recovery, should not be fed to the WTE plants. It is the non-recyclable fraction of dry waste that needs to be fed to WTE. NGOs like Sahas have been partnering with Bengaluru Civic Agency on Waste Management. Archana Tripathi is referring to the single biggest issue that waste to energy plants face, segregation at source. But why does it matter so much? WTE plants rely on one critical factor. Calorific value. This is the amount of energy a material releases when it burns. The higher the calorific value, the better the burn and more the energy produced. Take LPG. It has a high calorific value. That's why it cooks food faster with less smoke than dry wood. Now imagine if the WTE plant receives mixed or wet waste, or even glass or metal, all because segregation has failed. This reduces the combustion efficiency, energy output and at the same time increases emissions. Ideally, WTE waste should have more than 1600 kilocalories per kilogram. Karnataka's first and so far only waste to energy plant is in Birdi, 32 kilometers from its capital Bengaluru. The total cost of this plant is 310 crores. It is a joint venture with BBMP, so 50-50 share with BBMP and KPCL. From April, to, so April 4th, 2025, this plant is running continuously and we have burnt almost 1 lakh metric ton of waste till now. Uh, and we have generated around 32 million units of uh, power. So almost we 25 to 30,000 homes daily uh, we are uh, distributing the power. Every day, this plant burns 600 tons of non-recyclable waste around the clock. Non-recyclable waste segregated at the city's dry waste collection centers is loaded onto BBMP trucks and brought to the plant throughout the day. Here, it is weighed and dumped into a large waste pit that can hold up to 4,000 tons. Since Bangalore is a very cold city, the moisture content will be more on 25 to 30 percent. The waste which is dumped today, we are not using it. So, the, so that the moisture which is there in the waste, it is clearly it is taken through the leachate pit. So, we are dumped, uh, feeding the almost dry waste to the feed uh, to the boiler. 
that moisture turns into leachate, a toxic liquid. The plant treats this leachate before releasing it. Next, the gigantic claw lifts up to 2.5 tons of waste from the pit in a single grab. And drops it into a feed hopper. Like a giant funnel that controls how waste enters the incinerator. Inside, the waste is burned at 1000 degrees Celsius and this in turn heats water boilers. Water turns to steam. The steam spins a turbine and voila, electricity is generated. But this is where proper segregation of waste becomes crucial. Poorly sorted waste with low calorific value has hampered the plant's operations in the past. Only request is sometimes metal particles will come. If the metal particles will come bottom, my bottom mesh extra which you saw, it will get jammed. Almost one or two days it will take to remove those metal particles, which is a very difficult process. During that time, plant load we have to reduce, sometimes we have to shut down the plant also. So that is the only concern for me that BBMP should supply proper segregated dry waste. Then we can learn the plant with 365 days also, without any, any problem. Despite the challenges, the plant produces 11 megawatts of electricity per day. This is supplied to the Birdi substation and distributed to homes. The problem with WTEs is even the electricity that is generated here is the most expensive form of electricity. If you compare it with coal or solar powered, which is at rupees 2 per unit, uh, the electricity generated through the WT is about 7 to 8 rupees per unit. So that being the case, uh, I feel most of these WT plants would not operate in the long run because they will just not be financially viable. You cannot take this plant as for, a, for benefit or a fine, profitable business. This plant is to meet social obligation. It is used to mainly used to reducing the landfill area uh, and to generate a clean energy which is more important than the profit business. From the 600 tons of waste burned at the Birdi plant daily, what remains is the byproduct, 200 tons of ash. This is split into two types, the lighter fly ash which contains harmful particles like dioxins, nitrogen oxides and carbon monoxides is treated using activated carbon and lime. The heavier ash which settles at the bottom is transported to a landfill. The control room monitors these operations 24 bar 7. They look at the combustion efficiency, power generation and most importantly, harmful emissions. Swati Sambhyal has spent over a decade studying waste to energy plants across South Asia. When you are burning mixed waste, it is bound to have more emissions because, you know, probably the burning is not efficient and effective and also we clearly know that from high bottom ash generation. All waste to energy plants should have these uh, continuous emission monitoring systems installed. It should directly be sent to the pollution control board and of course uh, the CPCB portal probably where it can be accessed. There have been instances of non-compliance. Many a times uh, these entities have been slapped uh, with fines from NGT and with heavy fines to the tune of 25 lakhs and more. Uh, so we clearly know that the emission benchmarks are not met on a regular basis. If you compare them with other standards such as EU, we also see that the Indian standards are highly diluted for some of these uh, parameters. The waste to energy plant in Birdi, still waiting for its official inauguration, stands at a crossroads. On one hand, it is trying to solve an environmental crisis by reducing non-recyclable waste by burning it and generating electricity. On the other, high operational costs and waste segregation threatens to derail its future. Have waste to energy plants solved the issue of solid waste in your city? Let us know in the comments below. 
like and share this video for better reach and continue to support our work by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you.